Hello, so we're at Bruntingthorpe today. Um, we're doing some braking testing. This is the uh, company vehicle which we abuse daily for the, uh, the validation test, the company Passat. Um, it's a lovely day and uh, we've just done about 30 braking tests, so we thought we'd do some video while the brakes cool down. So I'm just going to go over the car installation and describe some of the tests we do and just show you the equipment in the car as we've been testing it. So we're testing three different systems on the vehicle today. So we have a production INS system. So this is the one that we're routinely shipping to customers at the moment. Uh, we've got a uh, INS system but aided by the new upgraded GPS2 receiver. And we've also got a prototype system on the vehicle today, which is the same GPS2 receiver but aided by GSM correction. So this is a form differential two centimeter accurate system. So I already mentioned on the top of the vehicle we've got the three test systems and each of the one, two, three test systems consists of a very high accuracy GPS antenna, so this is the antenna mounted here, and then underneath the antenna we have the IMU. So that the IMU consists of three gyroscopes and three accelerometers which are bonded together in a very small package and that's a tactical grade IMU, so that's the highest grade of generally available IMU. Now the data from both the GPS antenna I'm and the IMU are going down this armoured cable and they're going inside the car and if we just take a quick look inside the vehicle you can see it's a bit of a mess because it's development equipment but we've got the three separate systems so these are the CATS systems now they can be mounted any, anywhere in the vehicle there's no particular mounting requirements or orientation we just have them on the uh, on the back seat here just so you can see the LEDs and access the cards easily and now connected to the, uh, the CAT systems, if we come around and take a look at the front of the vehicle, you can see that we've got three Dash 4 Pros, and they're being used today to display the results in real time. Okay, so on the, on the rear of the car here, we have a, a laser sensor. So this is transmitting a laser dot directly onto the floor and looking for a reflection. And then onto the road, we bonded a reflective strip. So simply, the laser comes down, hits the road and it reflects back up and then as we cross over the reflective strip we get a time pulse which is connected to the speed boxes. So what you can't see here is as well as this laser strip we've got one about 40 meters down the road so as the car is driven down the road we get two pulses exactly 40 meters apart and we can check those are exactly 40 meters apart as we're using a class 1 tape measure and a laser distance center to measure the distance between the centers very exactly. So the areas that we typically see on a, on a test like this are about maybe one, two or three centimetres. So in fact the, the validation of the distance between the two points is very important and setting them out to exactly 40 metres is not easy. So we're in the vehicle now uh, and I just wanted to run through how a typical test is run. So the, uh, the equipment's already installed in the car. Um, we start up the car, powered up the equipment and then you have to wait for about 30 seconds to get a good GPS lock. So it's a nice clear test track here, um, fantastic GPS signal. Um, and then we drove the car for about one minute, just normal driving, we just drove up and down the track and that allows the INS system to fully converge. So now the system's initialized, converged, and it's ready to log and ready to acquire some very high quality data. So um, the, the Dash, Dash 4 Pros, they're mounted on the screen here. These are all currently set up with our standard battery configuration. So you can set up for all sorts of different purposes. At the moment, they're set up to display path distance, distance accuracy and speed, as well as the LEDs, which are indicating the overall system accuracy. So I'm just going to drive down the track now and, um, and you can see the results as they come up on the screen. So uh, this is the way we normally do the testing. So at Bruntingthorpe, there's various white lines on the track and I like to line up the driver's wheel here just with the um, just with the white line and that gives us an excellent guide. So we're just going over the markers now, but that's the first reflective marker and hopefully you can see the numbers are increasing. And now we're just going to go over the second reflective marker and it's stopped. So that was just a very slow steady state test. Normally the way the tests are done is we go over the first one at constant speed and then we apply the full brake so the ABS comes on so we're generating a full 1G as we cross the second marker. 